Hello, thanks for joining me for the August edition of Local Image. Several of today's segments take place indoors, but the nice weather brings me outside here at Bel Air Beach in White Bear Lake, just a few blocks from our studio. And it was inside our studio where two of today's interviews took place. We brought you part one of my interview with our co-worker Ray Widstrand last month. He talked about the night he was brutally beaten and left for dead on August 4th of last year. He told us of his miraculous recovery and his ongoing therapy, bouts with depression, and his hopes for living independently. He shares more about himself and his plans for the future in part two of this Local Image interview. Let's talk a little bit about um, the ray before the incident and the ray for the future in terms of um you know what were some of the things obviously you worked here you're still yeah. on the staff here um tell people a little bit about you know what you went to school for and and what you did here and kind of what your your goals are for sure. your career um i went to school at st cloud state university I was the programming director there for their campus TV station, UTVS. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. I had fun in college. Um, that's also where I kind of developed the nickname Dr. Ray. It was actually went all the way back to uh, middle school when I was in seventh grade just to be different. That's the way I signed paper, oh. <laughs> science class, Dr. Ray Woodstrand. Um, um, I've learned this about you. I mean, you you have a very sharp wit. You're you. very funny. Um, and it, it was last spring, a year over a year ago now, when we had a little contest here, and you um, wrote and produced, uh, starred in the promo that we did for our open house, and um, and it was funny. It was humorous, and that's that's really who you are, isn't it? Hi, Mr. Woodstrand. Yeah. Congratulations, Mr. Woodstrand. You are the Suburban Community Channel's grand prize winner. Wait, you mean? Yes, that's right. You've won your own TV show. Awesome. Yay, yeah, TV congratulations. Show. Yeah. Yeah, everything is amazing. Yeah. My happiest yeah. moment of my entire yeah. life just occurred. The truth is, we probably won't be coming to your house anytime soon. But we want you to join us for an open house at your community media center. Again, going back to college, um, some people are sort of specialists. They have a dream they wish to accomplish. They want to be the next director or editor or producer, actor, actress. Mm -hmm. I sort of was involved in everything. Yeah. Everything was interesting to me. From writing, from you know, scripting and storyboarding, production design, directing, producing, editing. Um, again, I was an employee of the station, so I was there a lot. Right. And I right. just helped people with their projects, whatever mm -hmm. they were. Talk about, um, obviously, a lot of supportive people out there who have been rooting for you, you know, all along the way and still are. We helped put the fundraiser together, Putts for Ray, Putts last for fall, Ray. and, and as successful as that was, you know, the funding that was raised, I'm sure, just a drop in the bucket compared to everyone knows medical expenses and care expenses can just, you know, be enormous. So are funds still coming in? Are people still donating? Or Thanks to the generosity of others yeah. at Putts for Ray. Yeah. Um, that has been a big help. You can still go to Wells Fargo and donate to Ray's fund to help me with medical expenses. I remember at the Putts for Ray, because we didn't know if you, we heard you might make an appearance that day, but we weren't sure. And I just, I remember the feeling and just the, the, the joy that was on everybody's faces the minute your dad rolled you in in the wheelchair into the dome, the golf dome in Maplewood, and uh, just how excited everybody was to see you. What was that? Because that was your first public 
outing, yeah. right? What was that like for you? Uh, it was nice to get back out in the public and I had driven by Aldrich Golf Arena just about every day. So it was cool to finally <laughs> go there. Mm -hmm. And I had a good time. And You stayed quite a while. Yeah, all the support was wonderful. How has it been for you to, I, I know it's been a challenge, especially for your family, to deal with the incredible media spotlight that was, you know, put on you and continues to be. How did that feel for you personally? Because you had, a, for that day anyway, there were several media outlets there wanting to talk yeah. with you. And um, I'm okay with it just because, again, I have an education in mass communication, so I'm used to being around reporters, around the news. I know you've been here recently visiting with Pete back in Master Control. I'm going back there for the first time in a long time. What did you think? I liked it. Um, some things have changed. They're getting a new server back there. They're converting some channels to HD. That's going to continue. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. But yeah, I'm looking forward to working again. Mm -hmm. It would just be nice to, you know, get out of the house and get back to work in some fashion. Right. Take us into a little bit maybe of your, your thought process on kind of looking back on what has happened and where you're going, you know? It seems so random, but it also does seem like there should be a point. Again, the kind of why me question is something that inevitably crosses your mind. I'm not sure there is a reason or a higher purpose or anything. I mean, I'm trying my best to deal with it and stay positive and heal and get back to life, but mm -hmm. I have no answer as of yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, hopefully someday. Right, right. So what excites you now? What are you looking forward to? Um, Besides well, your massages. <laughs> yeah, they do help quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for summer. The winter was really hard for like healing because I couldn't really go for a walk on account of all the snow right. and ice. It was a tough winter. Um, so summer's here. I went to the lake yesterday. It was fun looking at the lake, going outside and reading in the sun. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I'm excited to explore more of my now warmer climate. Right, me too. What is the message that you really want to get across to people out there who want to check in with Ray again a year later. What what do you want to leave with people? I don't know. I think uh, what I'd want to leave people with is a message of hope that through an individual strength you can overcome anything. I know the doctors are ready to harvest me for organs a year ago. And I was, you know, that close to checking out permanently. So value the time you have, value the people in your life. I definitely value my friends and family a lot more because you never know what's going to happen, what the next day is going to bring. Um, again, I have just tried to stay positive and not stop being the good person I was. I hate to say this, but um, part of me would still help those girls if I was back there again because I'm the same person, I know. I would still 
help them even knowing what it has cost. So in a way, I haven't learned anything. <laughs> but in another way, I haven't let it change me too much. We're glad that you are still the ray that we Thank had you. a year ago. I mean, yeah, your your good heart is is still fully intact, and your you. sense of humor and wit is right there. And we couldn't be happier to see the progress that you've made and uh, just so happy that you were here to be able to share some of your story with us today ray and thank we you. look forward to having you back here real soon thank you all right please keep ray in your thoughts and prayers his road to recovery has been a challenging and difficult one and he needs our support more than ever now that he's completed his medical rehabilitation and relies on his own will and determination to continue to regain his independence. Visit our On Location TV 19 YouTube channel for both part one and part two of my interview with Ray. Now, despite the black eye that the east side of St. Paul suffered when Ray was victimized by violent crime in the neighborhood there where he had lived, there are many positive outreach efforts continuing to happen by good people there, especially when it comes to caring for kids. Producer photographer Scott Jensen shares a closer look at one group making a big difference, one child at a time, on and off the basketball court. Our organization is Family Values for Life. We're one of the sponsors of this Clyde Turner basketball camp. A lot of our kids, when they when school is preparing to be out, they worry about meals, they worry about a safe place to be in. Well, this is the opportunity that the kids are in a safe place. It's a positive environment. They get an opportunity to meet adult mentors that can pour into their lives. Education, 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 education. The speakers that came in talked about education and the importance of making good decisions, the importance of, you know, the next 60 seconds of your life, uh, you, you can make a decision that can impact your life for the next 60 years. So it's good for them to hear, hear that kind of common sense approach. And we learn stuff about life, um, college and education and stuff. They come back every day for the punishment, <laughs> the discipline program that we have, and you know that they want it, they need it. And downside was like, Waking up in the morning, getting out of bed, and then just feeling this pain everywhere. But it, it's worth it. It's about the love. It's about letting them know that we care about you. You have to do this to be the best that you can be, you know, as a future leader. I would say unselfishness, and I would say collect collectiveness as a family. Like, your teammates are like your family, so that's what I kind of learned playing basketball. We need more programs like this, and they need to be going on all the time. But in terms of prevention and empowering young folks, uh, you can see the light in their eyes. And we are part of the big family, you know, we are a village. And I, I grew up in a, in, a, in a community where everybody was so like your mom and dad. And we, try, we need to try and come back to that. Now, let's go back inside our studio for this farewell interview with a young man whose passion for sports and drive to be on TV19 helped him carve out a career path and helped us capture some memorable moments for TV19 Sports and the Sports Pass show. Zach, congratulations. You're moving on to some new adventures in your career. Why don't you tell us what you'll be doing? Yeah, I'm going to be the uh, sports producer at KNSI in St. Cloud. It's a radio station up there covering uh, St. Cloud State Husky Hockey and then uh, local area uh, high school sports. So 
real excited to at least get on the airwaves as opposed to the cable waves and uh, <laughs> yeah, excited to move on to uh, another part of my career. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've been with TV19 for a long time. Tell us when you started and why you decided to even come here in the first place. Uh, August of 2007, uh, I watched TV19 for years before that and really wanted to help out and finally uh, I think I watched a commercial that uh, was promoting volunteers and I decided to finally send an email to Arlen Becker and I was 12 years old at the time so I was like hey what's the <laughs> minimum age I'm thinking yeah. okay maybe it's 13 and I only have a few more months until I'm 13 and uh, no and he just said uh, come on down and uh, do you know did the class and uh, I think my first event was a uh, tartan coronation ceremony and <laughs> ever since I've been uh, kind of working my way up here and now I'm uh, where I really wanted to be uh, when I began and uh, the the host of Sports Path and yeah. sports announcer here. Very cool. What were some highlights for, for, you, for you as a host, uh, producer of Sports Path um, over the years? What are a few that stick, stand out for you? Well, uh, first of all, the, the going and doing an entire show with Tim Peterson live from the Exxon Energy Center. Uh, that, was, that was really cool. We also did another one this year uh, from the Target Center. Titans making it to the state tournament in class four. As far as favorite moments, uh, the 2011 uh, Section 4 AA Boys Hockey Final in which uh, you know, such a crazy game. White Bear Lake defeated Hill Murray. Again, a little bias there, but the fact that it was a 4-1 to one game going into the third, Hill Murray comes back, ties it, and then we end up seeing double overtime. You know, it was typical uh, White Bear Hill Murray rivalry game. We've had some great teams over the years, no doubt. Mm -hmm. You guys have done a great job interviewing coaches and players. And one show in particular that um, I was really happy with and proud of because you helped coordinate that was getting all of the ADs from yes. our high schools here. I don't think that had ever happened before on the show. Yeah, we uh, we had a kind of a slow spring because uh, the weather was so awful that yeah. none of the spring sports could get started. Started and we're trying to figure out what are we going to do to kind of fill that time. And uh, I kind of thought of the idea, why not just talk to the people in charge of making everything happen uh, in the activities department at each school. And, and you know, it was a really informative uh, half hour. I, I really enjoyed watching that. Um, mm -hmm. Currently, or up until now, you've been co-hosting with our newest member, um, Tom Fitzer, yes. right? And so he will have to be joined by a new co-host. What would you say the person, the best candidate would bring to that position? What do they need to be able to do or what kind of person do they need to be? Just have to like their job. Um, they have to like high school sports. They can't, you can't just... Uh, can't fake it. Right. <laughs> you can't go into this job um, thinking, okay, I'm just doing this for now so I can work my way up to the next thing. You know, some people thought I did that. It was never about that. I mean, I, I started here you know, when I was 12 years old, just because I liked TV and I liked high school sports and I liked doing it. And, you know, that continued up until, you know, June of 2014 when I said goodbye. Um, and you learn a lot, mm -hmm. right? You've yes. You've come a long way with your production skills over the years. Yes, and my interviewing skills. I, uh, you know, one, you know, you asked me what some of my favorite moments were. One thing I did forget about was the uh, 2011, my junior high school first year hosting Sports Path, uh, and I was afforded the opportunity to actually not only do a sports report, but also try out for the Wiper High School hockey team and at the same time, and um, you know just because I was eligible for it. And we, you know, we did this really cool thing with Nick Anderson. I, you know, put a helmet cam on, and I, in fact, you know, I hate to brag, but I did <laughs> score the first goal of that year's tryout. Yes. Um, but, and we actually got it on helmet cam, it was great. But, um, <laughs> you know, one thing I, you know, I learned is that, you know, just to be, be me, be, be myself, and, and, Absolutely. and, you know, show that, and it's a lot better than, again, nobody, I found really like somebody who goes yeah. up there and you know anybody can go up there and talk and read a teleprompter for 30 minutes and whatever mm -hmm. but you know it takes talent to, to go it's up there. It's not as easy as right. it looks. It, is, it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> but being yourself is exactly. a key and you've done a great job with that and 
We're so happy to have been able to work with you all of these years and you're going to continue your great work up in St. Cloud on the radio there and so good luck with all that and uh, keep watching yeah. Sports Path and TV Absolutely. 19 right? Yeah thank you for the opportunity it's been an amazing uh, seven years here at the station great people uh, and, and again I can't thank uh, everyone here enough for the opportunity they drew Sports Path. Sports Path. And that's your Sports, Sports Path. Path. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here on TV19 Sports. Thanks for watching TV19. That's, that's your Sports, Sports Path. Path. Zach has a very bright future ahead of him, and we think he'll do a great job in St. Cloud. We also think that there is someone out there who would be perfect to take on the role that Zach helped to fill here at On Location TV 19. If you or someone you know is interested in being the face and voice for TV 19 Sports, just give us a shout. Visit onlocationtv.org for contact information. Now, here's a segment featuring an Oakdale man we interviewed a few years ago when he was involved with helping to create a charitable music CD to benefit youth and families in Washington County. He's continued his work as a music producer and one of his productions landed in a short film featured at this year's Cannes Film Festival. He shares more about the project in this local image interview. Tell us about about the film and and how you became involved with it. Well, uh, well the uh, the film is called La Edad del Sol, which is uh, Spanish for the Age of the Sun, and it's it's actually a short film that the director actually wants to do a feature film on. So uh, he picked a scene that he wanted to do and did kind of like a short film adaptation of it. So eventually we'll do the feature film of it. And how I got on board is. Um, from a friend that I, that I met in film school, uh, his name was Adolfo. He's from Mexico. He currently lives in Seattle now, and we do a lot of tons of work together nonstop. And he just emailed me and said, "Hey, I got have this friend who's doing a short film. You know, this kind of music uh, we're looking for. Do you want to be involved with it?" So I was like, "Yeah, sure." Well, tell us a little bit about this particular um, short film. Uh, it has a topic that you know is very kind of sensitive and, and maybe a little dark at times, but it's a it's a reality check mm -hmm. um, that people really need to be more aware of. So tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's a very tough film to watch. Uh, it, the whole idea behind it and was sophisticated abuse. That's one thing that the director that's what moved him to write this film and, and do this short film was that. Society really doesn't want to believe that this actually exists or that it's even possible to exist, but it does. Tengo frío. Playera. The word that that I heard you say, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think it's very interesting uh, term is sophisticated abuse, mm -hmm. and basically it's where adults are taking advantage of teenagers or young mm -hmm. people um, where the teenager or young person um, gets involved with a relationship mm -hmm. a lot of times online through Facebook whatever social media and they don't they don't for themselves see what's wrong with this and mm -hmm. it's and it's a way that the adults begin taking advantage of these young people and then it becomes it may become abusive physically, mm -hmm. we don't know, but, but it's abusive in the sense that, that this older person is taking advantage of the younger person and they, the younger person just doesn't even necessarily recognize what's happening, yeah. right? Is that, that, that's, that's exactly it and it's, it's definitely can, is damaging to the person you know, years later and it's, it's scary to, to think of that, you know, the abuse that that's always been kind of there, the physical abuse or emotional abuse, you know, we can kind of think like, oh, it, it's very hands-on, very, very this, it, it, you can put a label right, on it. Right, right. This seems kind of like, no, that, that doesn't really happen. Like, right. people can't build relationships out through social media or things like that and have it become this. Like, that, right. that, that's, just, that's just not real. But the fact of the matter that it is real and that I think as parents, uh, as a new parent, that's something we need to watch out for right right and then i think it we do need to educate people that you know this is this and is that's issue. really why this film is being made yeah and uh you know he did it in a very like 
raw, gritty way. And I applaud him for it because, right. like I said, watching it, I, I feel so uncomfortable because you're just like, I can't believe he's, I can't believe I'm seeing this. Right. But he, he wants to expose that truth and say, this is real. We need to do something about it. And you know, a lot of festivals have banned his this short film uh, because of the nature of it. But the thankfully, the Cannes Festival, they were like, no, we're going to show it. And it's got great applause. They loved it. And I think hopefully this will have a snowball effect and that he'll be able to do the feature film and that he'll just continue to make its presence known yeah. for years to come. So. so as a composer, how do you go about kind of getting your your mindset on what what you want to put together for because you said you didn't really know what the film was about yeah. when you first went into it so you, you first go into it they're kind of like well we want something kind of dark and you're just like oh okay and he likes the uh, you know he likes the chalice you're like oh okay so I'll, I'll see what I can do and then through feedback and through hearing what the film is about then I you get that idea to be a little bit more creative and darker with the music mm -hmm. uh, for example in, in the piece I do a lot of uh, mangling to some of the sounds. I think I have a double bass and put through guitar amp and effects to kind of give it like a, a twisted darker feel that's not typical of a double bass. And mm -hmm. uh, Same with the cello, adding it uh, delays and effects to it and big reverb which is not typical to have on a cello but you know this is not a typical short film. This is very dark, you know it's it's very eerie, not it's Not kind, scary, kind, eerie, it's kind of drama, it, eerie. Exactly, it's kind of beautiful. Yeah, uh, almost like re relationships should be beautiful, right. but this is there's a twist a twist it. to it that yeah. makes it unsettlingly beautiful. So. Yeah. No las vas a subir, verdad? No. Estas son para mí. Anything else you'd want people to know about yourself, your studio here? you know, the kind of work you like to, to do and... Yeah, well, uh, currently right now is, uh, um, I'm in the process of starting a post-production studio. It's called uh, Blue Ox Productions. Basically, what I wanted to do is, is, because I've had success in Mexico, and I do a lot of work in Canada as well, uh, I do want to do a lot of stuff locally because I, I've, I've done tons of advertisement, commercials, mm -hmm. you, you name it, I've done it. And so I, I know there's a, a group there's people here that, that need all of that. And it's always fun to catch up with you, Kendall. I mean, the last time we were with you, you were working on an incredible work of music that was really helping uh, the community to heal. Mm -hmm. And the, the proceeds of that went to um, some local charities here as well. So you're always doing something that seems to be helping to make a difference. And I have no doubt that this will be the same. So congrats, congrats on oh. the success of the film and your music's in it and we look forward to hearing what's next for you. Oh, well thank you very much. Oh. Well that's all the time we have. Please join us next month for more great local stories and join us for Celebrate Community Media Week starting September 15th at our studio for free tours demonstrations, food, and fun with a different event planned for each day of that week. Visit rwcable.com for more information. Until then, I'm Judy Skyvoss, and I do thank you for watching Local Image.